I mean, we, we could all just leave now. and We've had church, but we're not going to do that. Because we've got some important things that we're going to get to talk about today. Because every so often, everybody needs to be reminded, or for some, in some cases, informed for the first time why we do what we do. Why do we choose to do things the way that we do them? Where does that come from? Did we just make stuff up? Well, today you're going to find out where it all comes from. That why we like to talk about those four words you see all the time. That connect, grow, serve, share. Why those are so important in the life of every believer. Because here's the thing. Marshall Road is not here for us. We're here for God. We're God's church. But one of the reasons that we do exist is to help people Everybody take their next step in their relationship with God. And here's the thing. If you're still breathing, you've got a next step. God's not done with you. Whether we like it or not, you don't retire from being a Christian. You don't outgrow that. You don't, you don't fill a quota. If you're still breathing, God's got a plan for you. But this morning, we're going to talk about those four words. Connect. Why, why are we so passionate about connecting? Because, yes, that is just a word that we chose to represent something else. We, we love the picture that that word connect brings. That's why we put connect in everything. That room right there, that's called our connect center. That little card on the back of the chair in front of you, that's our Connect card. The, the app that Tim told you to download at the beginning of our time that you're going to hear more about. That app is built for you to be able to connect more easily, more quickly, and be more informed with the things that are happening here at the church. Why? Because it's all about connection. I mean, our kids in student ministries, some of you never even realized that we have Connect built in those names. Our kids' ministry is called KidCo. Well, that's short for Kid Connect. <coughs> Student ministry is called Stuco. Some of you look at that and might say, that's weird. Well, we're okay with that. A lot of things that teenagers do is weird. So it fits right in. But Stuco stands for student connect because we are passionate about this idea of people first and foremost getting connected to God because when you are born you are born disconnected from God why because of sin well what happens when we do connect with God well let me bring you to the Bible and, and we'll show you exactly what happens when you connect with God Look at 2 Corinthians 5 with me. It says this in verse 17 and 18. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God, and, and this is key, who reconciled us to himself through Christ. And see, that's why we understand. We were made right with God not through anything we could ever do. None of us could earn it. None of us could be good enough, do good enough. But that verse says it right there. We were reconciled to God from whom we were disconnected because of our own sin. But we were able to overcome that, not through our own abilities, but through Christ when he died on the cross. 
And that's what made all the difference. And it's because of what Jesus did that we who were born disconnected can now become connected to God in a connection that can never be broken. That's why this is such a huge deal. That's why we love the idea of connection. Because everything begins. Your life is completely incomplete. No matter how successful you might be, no matter how happy you might be, your life is incomplete. And you are missing what you could be and what you were created to be if you are not connected to God through Christ. Everything starts with that connection. That's why that verse says, the old you is gone, the new has come. In that moment, that moment that you accept Christ and become connected to God, the old you is wiped away. And God makes you brand new to begin to live a brand new life for him, fully connected to become the person you were created to be. That's why we love the power of connection. That's why it means something. So that's why we use that word. But not only do we connect with God, it's vital that we connect with other people believers that's known as the church and in in being connected there's life there there's relationships there there's health there and and one of the things we're going to talk about today real connection is not simply sitting in this big room surrounded by people it goes way beyond that. See, real connection involves stepping out and taking that next step into what's known as membership. See, membership is an act of commitment. That, that's when, when you're saying, God has brought me to be part of this family of believers. See, the truth is, there, there are a lot of churches See, the community talks about this church or that church or those churches. But people who simply attend, well, they talk about this church that I go to occasionally. But I want you to hear the difference. But somebody who's committed, somebody who's stepped across that line and said, hey, God has called me to be part of this church. It's no longer this church. It becomes my church and our church. Why? Because of that commitment. I want you to see this verse in Ephesians 2 and, and see why this is so important to understand. Look what it says in Ephesians 2.19. It says, So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. See, when we, when we can become connected to God, we become part of the family of God. But we're, we're no longer strangers. But, but I love this picture. Because this doesn't say the church is like a family. It says the church is a family. The church is your spiritual family. And, and just as a little bit of a newsflash, guess what? Your spiritual family is going to last a lot longer than your earthly family. Your spiritual family is going to be with you for all of eternity. But here's the thing. A Christian without a church family is an orphan. See, that, that's not how we were created to live. See, too many people want the benefits of simply attending a church without the accountability that comes with being committed. They want to attend with no expectations. Say, so I just want to come and, and listen and be entertained and be served. But that goes against everything that God calls us to. See, the difference between just simply being a Christian and being a member of a church family is, once again, that word commitment. See, when you commit your life to Christ, you become a Christian. But then you become a member of the church by committing yourself to other Christians. To do life together. Where I'm going to 
to be known, to be loved, to be encouraged, to be served, to give, to let God use me, to, to make a difference. And that's what happens when you get out of the chair and say, I'm no longer satisfied with simply just attending. I'm ready to become the person God created me to be, so I'm ready to move to the next step and officially become part of the family so that God can, can use me however he sees fit. I want you to hear from a couple of friends of mine on, on what it looks like when you take that step and become not just attenders, but you say, we're ready to get fully connected in the life of the church. So y'all can come on up. This is Jeremy and Kelly Murphy. They showed up a, a couple of years ago, and now we, we can't keep them away. And, and it's a beautiful thing. And so I'm going to let, just let them share with you a little bit of their story. Yeah, well, um, to go along with what he's saying, getting connected, it's, uh, you know, to help others get connected, um, Casey actually just invited us. We were coming out of a horrible storm in our, in our lives. And, um, you know, there's the timing of the message that was, was starting when we came here. And that simple invite just to, to bring us here to check it out um, has changed our lives. And uh, it's, it's been amazing. Um, one of the important things that we did was went ahead, we, we were spoke to by the message, and then we felt really compelled to get connected in there, start serving. Um, we've opened up our house to a connect group, and that's just amazing. I mean, going from a church family to making them part of the family. So, um, you know, there's really no difference between the two. And, uh, you know, all of that has come together and um, really stretched out to our family and our friends and to see the impact in their lives, too, has been amazing. It, um, it, our family could see the difference in us, and it spread to our son getting saved and baptized, and then our daughter and son-in-law getting saved and baptized, and now they serve, and this is, this is our family. We don't know what we would do without it. So... Thank you all for, for sharing it. And, and that's it. That, that's the testimony. I have the same testimony. I don't know what I would do w without my church family. And so many of you w would echo that. And see, for those of you that are, that are sitting in the chairs... But you've never taken that next step and said, you know what, that's, that's us. We're, we're here, but we're not all here. We're, we're not fully connected. We've, we've got one foot in, one foot out, because we, we just haven't taken that step yet. See, that's what happens when you take that step and say, I'm ready to go all in. That's when you get, begin to see God do incredible things. And, and you're going to hear more about the Murphy story later on uh, before we leave today, but I wanted to introduce them right at the beginning because, because I've gotten a front row seat to see how, what God has done in their lives. From just showing up one day, and then now, not quite two years later, how much God has done when we get out of the way and let God do what He can do. See, one of, one of the things that we're battling, especially... Here, here in America is a culture of rampant individualism. You know, people all want to just keep everybody at arm's length. I don't want to let people in because there's danger there. That's scary to, to take off that mask and let you see the real me because I'm afraid what you might do with that. Or I've been hurt before. I've been beat up. And so now I, I live with a, with a shield up at all times to protect myself from ever getting hurt again. 
See, one of the unique things you see in America that you don't see anywhere else in the world is this phenomenon that's not in the Bible, and it's not a good thing, but this idea of a Lone Ranger Christian. Somebody that says, yeah, I can be a Christian, but I don't have to be part of a church. You, you don't see that thinking anywhere else in the world. But it's very prevalent here. And, and a big part of that is on the church because, A, we, we have not taught people properly what the Bible teaches about why being part of a church matters so much because it does. Membership matters. Absolutely. Okay. And part of that is, is just, you know, people have been hurt by the church. And a lot of people have given up on the church because of bad experiences they've had in their past. And they said, I'll never go back. None of those things are good. None of those things do we want to be the, the testimony of, of any church. But the truth is, being a healthy believer involves not just believing. It involves belonging. We need each other. See, the truth is, we grow in Christ, not in isolation, but with other believers. That's how Jesus taught the disciples. They were, they were in their small group together. And that's why we are so hardcore about helping you take that next step, getting plugged in to a group of people, because that's where real life change, that's where real growth can happen. I've told you this a hundred times, and you'll, you'll continue to hear me say this, if all you get in your spiritual life is what you get from me in this room, it's not enough. It, it, you can't live on that. I mean, that, that's like eating half a meal a week, every week, and expecting to be nourished. You can't. It takes more than that. And where you get that more is when you step out of this room and go into a smaller room and have a group of people that you're engaged with God's word together. That's what we call our connect groups. Because that's where we believe growth happens best. And, and that's why we're willing to try different things. That's why we, we're, we, we've got groups that meet during the week. Because some people can't be involved at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. And we don't ever want just a scheduling issue to be the reason why you say, I can't be part of that. So we want to give people options. We want to make sure that we take away as many of your excuses as possible so, so that you have no reason not to. But we've also realized uh, over the last year that we don't have enough options at 9 o'clock here on Sunday morning. So that's why starting next Sunday, we're expanding that. I'm going to be leading a group at 9 o'clock starting next Sunday. Tim Darty is going to be leading a group. And then Doug Smith is going to be leading a group for our senior men. So with the groups that we already had and with these new groups that we're adding, there is going to be enough space for every single person from birth to not birthed um, <laughs> to have a place for you to, to find community, relationships, to find your church. And that's where we want to see everybody move to. We want to move you through this space in, into a smaller space so you can really get to know people and, and really do life with people. Because that's where we believe change and growth happens best. And not only that, though, but that's also why we do other things to help you grow in your relationship with God and in your relationship with other people. That's why we have our men's groups and our women's groups. We're doing a big men's event next month, in just about a month from now. Why are we doing something like that? Because the men need each other. In the same way that the women need each other. For encouragement and support in, in ways that just being with someone of the same gender is different. In a positive way. Over the next year... We're going to have events for 
for parents to talk about what it looks like to, to make your home that place of discipling, an, an environment for discipling your kids in the home, which is kind of the way God designed it to be. So we're going to help you do that. We're going to help equip you to do that. We're, we're going to have marriage events. Well, one of the things that's, right now things are just hard to pin down on a calendar because of you know, COVID and all that. We know we've got a, a plan for when we want to do something, but I can't give you exact dates yet. But next year, probably looking at next fall, we want to do a marriage retreat to where couples can get away overnight and, and just focus in and have somebody come in and, and lead that. Why? Because we want you to be healthy in your relationships. And we want to minister to the whole family. And we believe that healthy parents produce healthy kids. And, and the church is not called to raise your children for you. We're called to walk along, alongside you Amen. as you raise and disciple your kids. That, that's why God put the church here. But see, we believe that to be a healthy, growing Christian... A, a complete picture of what that looks like for somebody. They have three primary environments where that's expressed. And here, here's what I mean. A healthy, growing believer will have a corporate worship environment that they're involved in. That would be this room. So if you're in the room, if you're involved, you got, you got one down. Another aspect of that not only do you have a corporate environment where you're in a large group of people, you have a small group environment where you're doing life with a handful of people, you know, 10 or 12 other people. That's important. And not only do you have a place that you worship corporately and a, and a place where you connect with other believers in a smaller group, you also have a place where you serve. That's the complete picture of what it looks like to be a healthy, growing believer is you have a place. Like I said earlier, if you're still breathing, God's got something for you. He just does. And you might say, look, you don't know the, the physical limitations I have. There's not a whole lot I can do. Well, that's true. Some people are more physically limited than others. But guess what? There is the ministry of prayer that anybody can do. Amen. And that's a big one. That's not a, that's not a okay, if you can't do anything else, you can pray. No, that's primary. That's powerful. And, and we want people to say, hey, my calling is to be a prayer warrior. And I am going to live in that calling. We're, we're bringing back our, our intercessory prayer ministry. Um, we're starting on, on the chairs you see in front of you, these little pieces of paper that were on every chair. It says, sign me up to be a prayer partner. Well, what does that mean? Well, one of the things we want to see happen is we want to see to be able to build relationships between people and to, to have people praying for one another. We want to have a prayer partner ministry. So here's what you're going to do with that little piece of paper. Before you walk out of the room today and head over for lunch, if you say, I want to be part of the prayer partner ministry, I want you to put your name on that. And I want you to make sure you write neatly and you mark what gender you are. You say, why is that important? Because we're going to partner same gender with same gender. I mean, that's just the, the right way to do that. And so we're, we're going to partner men with men, guys with guys, women with women. Oh. And, and teenagers, you too. And I want you to fill that out before you walk out of here. And then just fold it up and leave it on your chair. And we're going to come gather these up when everybody's left the room. And so this is important. And that's what I mean when you, when you say, look, I can't do much, but, but I can pray. No, no, praying's a big deal. And when you sign up for something like this, this is a big deal. And, and you're not committing 20 hours a week to do something. These prayer partner ministries, you're committing to get with your partner by phone or, or, or in person if possible twice a month to just reach out and connect and, 
and we've got list of questions you can ask each other and, and help. So you take all the, the guesswork out of it for you. But this matters. This kind of stuff matters. But we want everybody to find their place of service. Some of you might say, yeah, I can pray, but I can do other things too. Some of you might be in the ministry of encouragement. Some of you might want to just gather at the church once a month and say, hey, I'm here to, to send out cards to people every month. People that may be going through something or people that maybe hadn't been here in a while. That's a ministry. That, I mean, so don't ever buy into the lie that, look, I'm, I've done my time. I'm too old. I physically can't do it anymore. There's a place. There, there's a place for you, for God to use you in his church. Look what the scripture says in Ephesians 4. It says, Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers, and this is key, to equip his people for works of service. Why? So that the body of Christ may be built up. That's why we have these places to serve, to build up the body of Christ. And there's no insignificant roles. They all matter. It doesn't matter if you don't have a microphone and don't get to stand up every week on this platform. Every role matters. Because we couldn't do this if we didn't have people serving with our kids next door. I mean, they're all of equal importance. See, the truth is God never meant for the church to be a one-man show. It's just never has been the case. You know, 58 times in the Bible... We see the phrase one another, where it says love one another, pray for one another, encourage one another, greet one another, care for one another, counsel one another, share with one another, help one another, serve one another, and, and so on and so forth. That is the mutual ministry of the body within itself. The church is never more healthy than when the body ministers to the body. That's why Ephesians 4 says that. He gave the church, the pastors and teachers, for what purpose? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry so that the body of Christ may be built up through their service. And we want to give you opportunities to serve, both inside and outside the church. And that's why we do things like we've done in the past, like Mission Jacksonville. It's, it's a way that, that we try to, to make a difference in our community. And we're going to continue to do more of those things. I mean, we've, we've got current opportunities right now right in front of you. We're getting ready for a, a Christmas event that we hope is going to make a huge impact on this community. You're going to hear later today at lunch about other ministry opportunities that you can get plugged in right now. But I want to let you hear from another friend of mine, Nina. This is your time. to just um, start out by piggybacking on what you said about prayer. Prayer is not the leading up to the main thing. No. Prayer is the main thing. Amen. So it, don't ever discount that. The definition of serve is to perform duties or services for something or someone. And I want to tell you why I serve. Serving for me is absolutely a passion. It fills a hole in my heart that nothing else can fill. I know to know the physical effect that I can have on the lives of others is satisfying, but to know the spiritual effect that I can leave by sharing the most important, most important and most satisfying news is the gospel. That's my ultimate goal. Sometimes it can be done without even saying a word. This is what my challenge to you is. To serve is to give more than money could provide. To serve is a personal connection, the building of relationships, the meeting of physical needs, the ability to share Christ, to bless others but not realizing until the service is complete just how blessed you've been. 1 Peter 4.10 says each of you should use whatever gift you have received 
So you've already been equipped to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. In Acts 20, 35, Paul says, And everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, saying, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Mark 10, 45 says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to be served. We are to be Christ-like. That means we are to serve. Another reason why I serve is a generous person will prosper Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. That's from Proverbs 20, 11, 25. And let me tell you, that is the absolute truth. It's not for nothing. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help him. Hebrews 6, 10. Serving can be exhausting. There's nothing that's physically refreshing about serving but I know that in my heavenly form I will have plenty of time to rest in Galatians 6 9 it says let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up Amen. we are not to sit here and be preached at and do nothing Amen. that does not tell this man he's done an effective job what we should be doing is just exactly what he's preaching to us Sorry, I'm stepping <laughs> in no other right. shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Serving is a byproduct of the relationship that we have with Christ. Just as you grow where you invite others to church or you give where you tithe to the church, serve is a result of the desire to do for the one you worship, to share that same type of love with others and help them to discover that same relationship with Christ that you have. It's multiplication in everything we do. You're worth something to God at every age. Amen. Every age. And I've done a number of events in my career, and I've worked with every age. And so there's something for everyone. We are to be wholly devoted, working until God says it's done, not till we say it's done. God even told Joshua. He was too old, but he still had work to do. Hello. <laughs> Retirement is not in the Bible. Did you know that? Blanche, you're not off the hook. You don't get to retire. Good. Retirement's not in the Bible. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. I serve because I love making connections. Love that. I love connecting with people. I love meeting needs. I love being a part of the puzzle to share the gospel. And it's my goal to never utter, I've done my time. God help me and strike me dead if I ever say that. Until God calls me home, I have a purpose and ability to do whatever it is he's asking me. Whether it's in mentoring young people or holding a baby in the nursery, I will do it. Really know how to follow that. Uh, one of the things we're working on right now, as a as a way to do ministry outside the church, is we're we're researching and studying on what it might look like if, if we had a a food pantry ministry here, um, because we know that's a tangible need in this community. So we're exploring that possibility that if God opens those doors, well that that'll be an avenue that people can get involved with and be part of that ministry but you might say well I just don't know where I fit best that's great we can help you find it I mean you know just tell us that and, and we'll help you discover how God has wired you how God has gifted you as the scripture says for ministry and then we'll we'll make something up to fit who you are there, there's something for everybody and it matters why does it matter so much because your serving may make the difference for somebody's eternity. It, it very well could. You might say, well, that's silly. I promise you, when we, one of the things we're going to start doing more regularly that's something anybody can do that's so simple is simply just prayer walking our communities. 
that, that requires very little prep, no effort, just to, just to be willing to get out there and, and pray. And I promise you, when we start doing that, we'll start seeing God opening up doors like we never imagined. Why? Because prayer works. And sometimes, you know, the problem isn't that God is, is waiting. It's that God is waiting on us to engage him. Um, God is, is ready to do something, but he's, he's going to wait till we're, we're ready to allow him to do something. But later today at lunch, you're going to be able to give some more thought to this idea of, okay, where, where could I serve if I could pick somewhere? Oh. We're not going to let you leave till you answer that question. So just putting that up. Oh. But as you, as you grow in your faith as a believer, see, that's why we use those words, connect, grow, serve, share. It's a progression. First, you connect with God. Through faith in Christ, you become a Christian. Then you understand that your need to connect with other believers through membership in a local church. And as you do that, you discover, hey, as I'm growing in my faith, I realize that God has gifted me for service in his church. So I'm finding my place to serve, to build up the body of Christ, wherever that place is. But then you, you realize, you keep reading, you say, but I also have a, a mission for my life as a believer. God's given me a commission. What, what does that mean? Well, look at Matthew 28, 19. It says it like this. It says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So that, that word, that, that verse literally means as you are going around your daily life. As you are going through life, make disciples. Who? Every believer. It doesn't say pastors. It doesn't say church staff members. It just says, if you're a believer, go and make disciples. That, that's our commission. And there are so many ways we could go about doing that. Well, you know, we've, we've done outreach events and festivals and and daddy-daughter dances and, and other things as a way to, to bring the community in here so that we could build relationships with them for the purpose of, of communicating the gospel. You know, think about ways we share things now. None of us knew this, but because of your investment in God's timing, we, we had set up this room, and, and it was a job, let me tell you. I mean, Lucas could testify to that, that he spent so many hours up in these rafters pulling wires and fixing things and that had to happen. And, and Rue and his team have spent hundreds of hours setting all this up to get a live stream working. Do you know that we finally got all the bugs worked out in February of 2020? And then you know what happened in March of 2020? They shut us down. Isn't that amazing how we got it just in time? It's a coincidence. Nope. <laughs> of course it wasn't. God set all that up. And, and just as a testimony to the abilities of the team we have working here, do you know that because of the quality of our stream, we have much larger churches coming to us saying, how can, can you help us? Can you teach us how do y'all do y'alls? And, but that's just the, a testimony to the abilities of the people that that we have working here. Get this. You got to some of you met Carla a couple of weeks ago. We got we got to see her get baptized today. Did you know that Carla has has been watching us for over a year from her home in Brazil through our stream? She has been tuned in for over a year because we were able to get that to her via technology. And now God's brought her here live and in person. And, and I, w I wish you could have, I had the opportunity over the last year just to, to have some, some FaceTime conversations with her and Chris and, and things like that when she was still in Brazil. And you know, if, if you could have seen her face the first time she actually stepped into this room in person, I mean, you, know, you think we take it for granted? We do. 
This is something that she's been dreaming about for a year. I can't wait to get to be there in person to, to worship with my Marshall Road family. And now she's here. She's baptized. She's ready to become a member of Marshall Road. She said the same thing that so many of you have said. She said, as soon as I got there, I fell at home. And that's a huge deal. We, we have people, the Clark family. Some of you know them. Some of you may not. But they got transferred to Germany a little over two years ago. And they still tune in regularly. And they watch our stream. Because through technology, we can, we're able to leverage that, the word that Nina used, to multiply the impact that, that one little church can have. We've had other people that have had to be relocated that still tune in every week to, to watch the stream. So that's one of the ways that, that we share. You know, we're, we're a partnership in this. You guys share what the church is doing. And, and one of the great ways that we can all share is through our social media. That's an incredibly easy way to get a message out. Well, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to give you six easy ways. And, and, and I'll put these out later on today. But six easy ways that you can share about your church on social media. The first one is this. Like us on Facebook. If you have a Facebook profile, then find Marshall Road and click like. It's, it's very simple if you have not done so already. And here's another one. Every time you're here, check in. Just click that check-in button and check in at Marshall Road. Because here's the thing. More of your friends will see you checking in at Marshall Road than almost anything else you post. Because that's one of those things that Facebook algorithms put to the forefront when it sees you check in somewhere. So that gets a lot more traffic. Just, you don't have to type anything. Just hit check in at Marshall Road. And then like and share the content that we produce through our social media. And, and here's why that's important. The more people that like and share it, the higher it ranks to Facebook, and the more people they'll show it to. The more, the more of your friends will see it, the, the more touches it gets. So it's very easy for you. Anytime you see something that Marshall Road posts, just click like, click share. Just kind of get that in your mind. Because why does that matter? Because it multiplies the impact we can have. Every one of you are social media missionaries. And, and if you're sharing positive things, people are going to see it, and it has the ability to do something in them when they do. Here, here's another way. Write a review of us on Facebook. And give us five stars. That's okay. uh, why? Because a lot of people check those reviews when they're new to an area. And they have power. Hey, here's one. The, the pictures and videos you take when we're having an event, stuff like that, post them. Post them to your social media and you know, tag the church. Or, and then here's, here's one last easy one. And there's plenty more. These are just a handful. But if, if there's a song that spoke to you or, or something that was shared from the platform, uh, uh, you know, a, a verse or a phrase or a quote or something, type it out. Share it and hashtag Marshall Road. I mean, just, it's just another way to, for God to multiply the message. An easy way through people's social media that they're already on. And, and so, you know, and guess what? If you're sitting on your phone during church and, and somebody calls you out, you say, look, I'm just posting the message. I'm just, I'm just sharing right now, you know, go ahead. That's good. I want you to check out this graphic on the screen right here. There's still one method that is head and shoulders above every other. How do people start attending church? 86% a friend invited me. It's overwhelming. The number one reason that someone is likely to attend a church is not because of a program or a promotional campaign or a big event. 
It's because somebody I knew invited me. Some of you are here today because somebody you knew invited you. Casey, come on up. It's amazing how God can can take a small thing, and we're back to that word again, and, and multiply it. I want you to hear Casey's story. You can make me follow Nina. That's what I said earlier. I was sitting next to him. So thanks a lot. Um, most of you all know me, um, but I've been back there thinking, what would I say? I mean, he's asked me this a week ago, and the first thing I said was like, this isn't about me. Um, but I will give you this little bit of insight. So I've grown up in church, and everybody kind of knows that that knows me. Um, and one of the hardest things that you will not believe is it's really always been hard for me to invite somebody to church. It's not that I didn't want to, it's just I didn't really know how to, and um, as a kid, I was always kind of weird about it, didn't really know, but I will tell you, oh, it just, there it goes, but I will tell you something, when you are happy and you love where you go, it's really easy, yeah. and I love this church, I love so many things about this church, and um, so I've been able, since we've been coming here for, gosh, has it been about, how long has it been, Brooke, because I forget, <clears throat> it's been eight, it's seven years Six, six, something like that. So, uh, so as 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 luck would have it, or as God would have it, right? Because everything is done by for a reason. Everything is done for a reason. Um, we got a new employee, and his name was Jeremy, and he was right across the hall from me. So I get to stare at him all day. Not anymore, but I used to have to stare at him all day. And uh, Jeremy was going through a rough time. I mean, um, he was just you know him and his wife were having some problems, but they were trying to work it out. And I just remembered that we were going to have a marriage seminar, that Lance was going to have this marriage deal. And again, I've never been good. I'm good about doing a lot of things. I can make a fool of myself. I can dance. I can play the drums. I can act like an idiot all day long. But I have never been good about being serious and being like, hey, would you come to church? But something inside of me just said, just invite him. You know. And I was like, do I want to see him on Sundays too? I got to see him on Monday through. <laughs> Sorry, Jeremy. Um, but no, in all, in all seriousness, I thought, I'm just going to invite him. You know, it, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to say, hey, why don't you come? We, we have a really good band. We're, it's really good. You know, and we're having this, and just all of a sudden, we're having this marriage thing too. And man, let me tell you, God did the rest. I mean, all I did, all I did was say, hey, why don't you come? And uh, it's pretty cool to see. Their family. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And uh, again, it's not about me. It's about God. Amen. So if I can do it, and trust me, I do not like being serious. I don't, yeah, no, this is weird. If I, can do it, if I can do it, then you guys can too. And let me tell you again, if you're proud of your church, because I know some of you are, then it's really easy. And I love my church. So that's all I got. So in case you hadn't put that together, the, the first couple that you met, Jeremy and Kelly, that was the couple that Casey invited his co-worker here to work less than two years ago. A simple invitation. But I want you to see how God can multiply that simple invitation. So since Casey made an invite to a coworker, they came. God healed their marriage. And, and since they started coming, they've seen their son saved and baptized here their daughter saved and baptized here, their son-in-law saved and baptized here, their best friends have started attending, and half of their family has been saved and baptized here. Amen. And, Amen. and it all started because one, one person said, you know what, I, even though it's, it might be a little awkward, it's not... It's not a 
normal conversation, like talking about sports or something like that, but he's exactly right. We talk about what's important to us. 